Hello everyone, this video is the second video on the topic of workplace mobbing. It is dedicated to practical advice to targets of workplace mobbing. That being said, this video is useful for everyone. Research shows that more than 95% of workplaces in the United States do not have collaborated culture. So this means that if you're watching this video, there is a high likelihood that you work in an institution where mobbing may occur. So it's good to know what mobbing is and how to deal with it. Now before I share with you a few research findings that are very helpful to the targets of workplace mobbing, I want to encourage you to look through the resources that I have included in the description to this video, including a short paper by Heinz Leinmann, the pioneer on workplace mobbing, that describes the phenomenon of workplace mobbing. So the first useful piece of advice to a target of workplace mobbing is to do your research. Now you may say, why do I need to read all of this literature? Maybe there are professionals who will be able to help me. Perhaps a therapist, uh, a health professional, a social worker, a lawyer or some other professional. The reason why I uh, give this advice here is that it doesn't seem like any of these professionals receive training on workplace mobbing when they receive their licenses or when they study uh, to get their degrees. Workplace mobbing is a fairly well-researched phenomenon, but the information and the results of the research on workplace mobbing are not widespread enough for all of these for professionals to really know what it is and how to handle it. So, in fact, some of the resources that I have linked down below caution against following unhelpful advice that you may receive even from a therapist or psychologist or, or lawyers or your friends or other professionals. As, as well intentioned as this advice may be, it may lead to worsening of your situation and it actually has happened to other targets of workplace mobbing. And you do not want to do the same thing as they did. You do not want to just follow somebody's advice. You want to do your own research to make sure that what you do is informed by the results of this research. So now let me share with you two uh, research findings that will be very helpful as you deal with the situation of workplace mobbing. The first finding is by Heinz Leinmann, the pioneer on the workplace mobbing. So Heinz Leinmann uh, identified five phases of workplace mobbing, which I have listed in my previous video and it is linked down below. The fifth phase of workplace mobbing, which is the last phase, is expulsion. So what Heinz Leinmann found is that somatic illnesses and mental illnesses intensify in the targets of workplace mobbing after they're expelled from their workplace or, or they resign uh, voluntarily. And actually Dr. Leinmann identified that about 10 to 15 percent of all suicides in Sweden at the time when he was doing his research were consequences of workplace mobbing. So this is a very disheartening uh, finding uh, and it is unpleasant to learn. However, this knowledge may set you free when you do your cost-benefit analysis, when you try to decide whether or not you want to stay in your workplace. When you think about, well, if I stay in this workplace, I'll continue to get my salary, maybe I will earn a pension. So when you do, when you try to make this decision, knowing the consequences of workplace mobbing, how severe that they can be, it can help you to make a good decision for you. And I'm not advocating for one decision or another, but I think it's an important piece of information to have as you make your own decision. The second research finding that I would like to share with you that I hope will empower you is the study that was commissioned by Workplace Bullying Institute in the United States. So this research study was intended to find out what happens 
to the targets of workplace mobbing after they try to per pursue the official channels in their workplaces to improve their situation. So after they go to HR, after they try to use the institutional policies, uh, after they try to use the official channels, what happens? So the results of this research study uh, show that the situation improves to the targets of workplace mobbing in less than 2% of all cases. So in the vast majority of all cases, targets of workplace mobbing have reported that their situation worsened after they tried to use the official channels to improve their situation. So how can it worsen? So uh, some of the targets reported that uh, other co-workers sided with the bully um, and that the, their situation worsened. In, in other cases what may happen is that the policies are twisted and then they are used against the target of the workplace mobbing. So again this is another piece of information. I am not advocating for not using the official channels. In fact some people may want to use the official channels just to make sure that they did everything that they could because if you have a 2% chance of improving your, your situation you may want to take that chance. Um, instead of leaving right away. So I'm not saying here that pursuing official channels uh, is something that I do not advise, but it's just good to know that if you do pursue official channels and your situation does worsen, that you do not blame it on yourself and you do not go into this um, sort of vicious cycle of blaming yourself for what has happened. You do not doubt whether or not you explained the situation well enough or if you have done something wrong or if you didn't collect enough evidence. The fact is that in 98% of all cases the situation does not improve when targets of workplace mobbing pursue official channels to help themselves. So this was the first piece of advice. Uh, do your research on workplace mobbing and I have shared with you two uh, research findings that hopefully will be, will be helpful to you as you deal with workplace mobbing. Now the second piece of advice is to try to separate your identity from your workplace. You are not your position in your workplace. Your workplace is somewhere where you go every day, you spend a lot of time there, but you are not completely defined by your workplace. And sometimes if you are a victim of workplace mobbing, it may feel as if you are only that worker, employee of that toxic workplace. One way to rediscover your identity outside of being an employee in that workplace is to rediscover your hobbies, reconnect with your friends and family outside of your workplace and in terms of your professional growth try to connect with people who work in your profession but do not work in your workplace. Sometimes going to a workshop or a conference helps with, with this task. So uh, try to separate your identity from the position of being an employee in your workplace as much as possible because the more you root your identity in something that is outside of your workplace the less uh, effect uh, the workplace mobbing will have on you. The third piece of advice that I want to share with you in this video is to have an exit strategy. Having an exit strategy it doesn't mean that you are going to leave a workplace but just having the strategy is going to make you feel better. So update your resume, write down all of your accomplishments, it's going to boost your self-esteem and your sense of self-worth uh, and it is very common for this to be attacked uh, during workplace mobbing situation. So update your resume and you can even apply for a few jobs and interview and it doesn't mean that you have to take a different job but who knows maybe there is something out there that you may like better than your, your uh, current uh, job and maybe you would have liked that even if the mobbing was not going on. So uh, at the very least update your resume. 
the second thing that you can do to uh, have an exit strategy is to have a plan B. If you were not involved in working in the profession in which you are right now, is there anything else that interests you? Uh, what would you need to do to do that other thing? Would you need to go back to school? What would you need to do? And it, again, it's just a plan B. You do not have to do it. But having this plan B, it gives you more and more options so that you are not so vulnerable to the events at your workplace. The third thing that you can do to have an exit strategy is to make a financial plan. So you can even meet with a financial advisor and look at all of your assets and look at your finances and see what would you need to do and how you could cope in case you needed to leave your workplace and you maybe were unemployed for a little while or you decided to go back to school. So meeting with a financial advisor might be a good um, portion of your exit strategy. So let us summarize what we have learned in this video. If you are a target of workplace mobbing, there are three things that you can do to help yourself. The first thing is to do your research including reading some of the resources that are provided in the link to this video. Uh, and when you do your research, you will be armed by that knowledge when you try to make a cost-benefit analysis regarding whether or not you want to leave your current workplace. And the two research findings that have been shared in this video are about the severe consequences of workplace mobbing to the health of the targets of the workplace mobbing, and also about the lack of success of targets of workplace mobbing in the situation where they try to use the official channels to improve their situation. So the second thing that you can do to help yourself is to separate your identity from the position that you occupy at your workplace. And the way that you can do it is by reconnecting with your family and friends, by connecting with other professionals outside of your workplace, and by pursuing your hobbies. The third thing that you can do to help yourself is to create an exit strategy. There are three components to an exit strategy that you might want to use. One is to update your resume. Second component is to think about what would you do if you were not in your current profession? What are other things that you are interested in? Would you be willing to go back to school? And the third component to an exit plan can be meeting with a financial advisor and creating a plan um, about what you would need to do if you found yourself out of work and unemployed for a little while. So this is all for this video. I hope that you liked uh, the information that I tried to pack into this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Give, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Please share any other advice that you may have to targets of workplace mobbing. I would love to learn any additional advice that you may have. And my next video in the sequence on workplace mobbing is going to be a set of suggestions of what friends and family of targets of workplace mobbing may do to help those targets um, to cope with their situation. So this is all for tonight. You may have noticed that the lighting has changed as I have been uh, uh, taping this video. Uh, I hope that you're doing well during the pandemic. Uh, I also plan to do a series of videos about how to take care of yourself during the pandemic and how to cope with all of the difficulties that a pandemic has brought uh, and also uh, how to find silver lining in the situations in during the pandemic. So this is my plan for the future of this channel. If you want to be notified when a new video comes out, then just press this bell button so it, it, it kind of, uh, people say, ring a bell. Uh, so that way you will be notified when a new video comes out. I hope you're doing well. Take care of yourself. Be well. And uh, I will connect with you soon uh, with one of my next videos. Bye!